antibiotic resistance poses one of the greatest threats to global health today, and conventional drug therapies are becoming increasingly ineffective and limited. Medicinal plants used by East African traditional healers in treatment of wounds and infections might offer a solution to solve the problem of antibiotic resistance. It is estimated that more than 25% of the Western drugs prescribed contain plant-derived natural products as active ingredients. Yet only a small proportion of plant species has ever been investigated for pharmacological activity in a laboratory setting. In this short presentation behind the paper, I'll provide an overview of the work that we did in collaboration between the Quave Research Group at Emory University, the Ethnobotany Research Group at Makarere University in Uganda, and the Garb Lab at Nuremberg University of Applied Sciences in Germany. First, 39 traditional healers from 29 villages were interviewed in the rural Greater Mpigi region in Uganda. Results of this, this ethnobotanical study were recently published in the Journal of Ethnopharmacology. Today I'll be speaking about the work that we just published in the journal Scientific Reports. This ethnobotanical study led to collection of 16 mostly understudied medicinal plant species that were locally found to be critical to anti-infective traditional medicine practices, in particular skin and wound infections and symptoms associated with bacterial infections. The majority of these species have not been studied for potential bioactivity yet. The stacked histogram figure shown here shows the relative frequencies of citation in percentage of treatment of relevant medical disorders. Here, these values assess the importance of a plant species used for a specific medical condition relative to the total number of informants interviewed in the study. Consequently, the higher the value of accumulated relative frequencies of citation on the x-axis, the higher the traditional use of a plant species in treatment of medical conditions relevant to our study. The pharmacological investigations were realized through a Fulbright-funded research stay of the first author, Fabian Schultz, who came to my lab. His library contained 86 crude extracts derived from 16 plant species and were screened for bioactivity. Crude extracts from the same species were different from each other in terms of chemical composition because different solvents and extraction methods were used. Extracts were evaluated for their ability to inhibit the growth of clinical isolates of multi-drug resistant bacterial pathogens. The extract library was also screened for corm quenching activity against Staphylococcus aureus and cytotoxicity against human keratinocytes. After these initial library screens were complete, hits were followed up via dose response studies and a delta toxin production inhibition assay for direct protein output assessments. Putative matches of compounds were elucidated via LCFTMS for the best performing extracts. Results of this study were ultimately transferred back to the traditional healers through a series of field workshops. Today, antimicrobial resistance already accounts for 700,000 deaths annually, and by 2050, this figure is estimated to reach more than 10 million deaths per year, which is more people than currently die from cancer. Six species have been identified by the Infectious Disease Society of America as being especially dangerous due to their potential multi-drug resistance mechanisms and virulence. These are termed as the escape pathogens, which is an acronym for Enterococcus faecium, Staphylococcus aureus, Klebsiella pneumoniae, Acinetobacter pneumoniae, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and Enterobacter species thus indicating that they are capable of escaping bactericidal action of conventional antibiotics. When screening all 86 extracts against one multidrug resistant strain of each escape pathogen, 26 extracts showed growth inhibitory activity and were further investigated. Herungana madagar scariensis is a tropical tree found in the Hyperacaceae family whose stem bark produces a blood red sap when cut. We reported a good antibacterial activity against Enterococcus faecium with a therapeutic index of 32 when compared to human keratinocytes. 
Xanthoxylum chalybeum is a deciduous tree found in the Rutaceae family. The diethyl ether extract displayed strong growth inhibitory activity against both MRSA and Enterococcus facium, as shown here. There were no cytotoxic effects against human keratinocytes, with 512 micrograms per mil being the highest concentration tested. Antibiotics are not the only anti-infectives that could provide an effective weapon against these pathogens. Another therapeutic yet non-antibiotic strategy is through targeting bacterial virulence controlled by quorum sensing processes. The quorum sensing mechanism mediated by signal molecules regulates the expression of virulence genes in the majority of pathogenic bacteria. Biofilm formation, toxin production, and other virulence factors are controlled by quorum sensing and the production of virulence factors can weaken the balance of host defense mechanisms. And so inhibition of quorum sensing induced by secondary plant metabolites can significantly attenuate bacterial virulence and substantially enhance vulnerability to conventional antibiotics and to the immune system. Therefore, we introduce the extract library of Ugandan plants to our quorum sensing inhibition model, specifically targeting the accessory gene regulator system of Staphylococcus aureus, which plays a key role in MRSA's pathogenesis. During an initial screening of 16 micrograms per milliliter, a total of 11 extracts from seven plant species revealed quorum sensing inhibition activity above 40% against one of the AGR reporters. Results are shown in the table. The five most active extracts were taken to the next round of assays, which included monitoring of direct toxin output. This enabled us to assess and confirm the antivirulence effects of one of the translational products of the AGR system in Staphylococcus aureus, known as delta toxin. Delta toxin is responsible for various pathophysiological effects caused by Staph as it seeks to evade host defense mechanisms. Our in vitro experiments aim to measure delta toxin levels during which extract treatment at sub growth inhibitory concentrations through examination of the bacterial supernatant using hydrophobic interaction chromatography. We tested the extracts at 32, 16, and 8 micrograms per mil and compared this to the untreated control. All samples were normalized for growth during supernatant harvest and results were reported as the total peak area and peaks are identified as either deformulated or formulated delta toxin. What is most noteworthy is that all five extracts exhibited strong delta toxin production inhibition activity against our S. aureus strain, significantly decreasing toxin output. There are two extracts that really stood out by showing the most promising results regarding their ability to inhibit quorum sensing in MRSA. Importantly, both extracts also displayed limited to no cytotoxicity below the highest test concentration of 512 micrograms per mil, suggesting that the use of this plant extract and species could be safe to human cells. More studies, however, are necessary when examining this in a live animal. The traditional use of the roots and leaves of these two species shown here in wound treatment indicates that the extracts might demonstrate a significant reduction in dermonecrosis after infection with a virulent strain of MRSA. However, it is essential to further pursue this line of investigation to determine their ability to exhibit these activities in vivo. In addition to investigating the potential cytotoxic effects of extracts that displayed antimicrobial bioactivity, we also performed a library screen at a single concentration of 64 micrograms per mil. Results demonstrated that, with the exception of one extract, all 86 extracts displayed no cytotoxicity above 50%. The two best performing extracts in the growth inhibition experiments, as well as in the quorum sensing and delta toxin production assays, were further investigated by chemical characterization via liquid chromatography mass spectrometry analysis and searched for putative matches. This led to identification of 60 peaks. Most of the ions yielded several putative matches for secondary plant metabolites, which are isomers of the experimentally determined empirical formula. 
In conclusion, our study provided scientific evidence for the potential therapeutic efficacy of 16 medicinal plants from the Ugandan rainforest and grasslands that are used by traditional healers for the management of infections and wounds, with 13 out of 16 species tested being validated with our in vitro studies. In future work, we plan to conduct bioassay guided fractionation studies on the four best performing extracts, as this could result in the discovery of promising natural products. This work was funded by the National Institutes of Health, the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease, the German Federal Ministry of Education and Research, the German Research Foundation, and the Fulbright Association. <laughs>